Welcome back. I'm joined via Skype from Los Angeles with Devin Handy. Devin is a feminist podcaster and founder of Hellbent Media. She's here to talk about raising feminist girls and boys. Plus, we are going to discuss the surge of more women running for office. Happy to have you, Devin. How are you? I'm great. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, it's my pleasure. So let's start right off with Hellbent Podcast. How, when did yeah. you start it and what was the idea behind it? So we started in 2017, so right after Trump was elected president, and we realized that there was really a lack of female and minority voices in politics, particularly the sort of political punditry that you see. Okay. So we really wanted to create a space where we elevate women's voices, people of color's voices, LGBT community voices, and create a space where we could you know, really create a, a more intersectional feminist perspective on the news. Okay, so you've been on for on the air for about a year or so, right? About uh, two years. We started at the beginning. Two years? Of how, how has it changed since the beginning? Well, you know, we really didn't know what we were doing when we started. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, we literally bought two microphones and some space on the internet and then just started talking. And we weren't really sure what we were going to do with it. And what it's really become is a community mm -hmm. of people who really felt that their voices were lacking. And so we have a very active Facebook group, a very active community on Twitter where we all talk and we share stories. And it's really become more about creating this space and creating a, a, an outlet where we can use our, our platform to cover the stories that aren't getting covered elsewhere. How yeah. difficult is it for a woman these days to start a media company? Well, <laughs> it, <laughs> I mean, a lot of it is, is people just don't expect you to do it. Okay. And, you know, you really have to not take no for an answer right. and really push to be part of the conversation. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I like to say that podcasting is the democratization of media. Okay. There's no real gatekeeper or barrier to entry in theory, but there are still definitely like there, there have become there media companies have been created and a lot of them are owned and operated by men and okay. other groups that traditionally run the media. And so it's just been an exercise in pushing forward, not taking no and um, really you know, sometimes you have to yell to be heard. <laughs> <laughs> right, I understand, yeah. So I just, you, have, you have a daughter, correct? I have a son. I have you a have a son. How difficult is it to, to, to teach somebody the feminist movement that's currently going on right now in the country? It's actually way more difficult than I think I even anticipated. Right. <laughs> I mean, a really a good example is the, the school, my son goes to preschool, and the school that he goes to is very progressive. We, we live in a very liberal area. Right. We live in a very wealthy area. And um, I remember last year for, for, you know, every year for Mother's Day, they do like a Mother's Day party at the school and they, they right. gate it. So some people go at 10, some people go at 1030, some people go at 11. Right. Um, and then they do a Father's Day party as well. And the Father's Day party, they sent out an email that said, OK, well, we're going to do all the fathers first thing in the morning because daddies have to get to work. Right. Right. And so there's just this base assumption that that women have more time or that women are more able to make these sort of things. And they're really concerned about dad's schedules, but less concerned about mom's schedule. And it's just that culture that we don't realize really does rub off on our kids, especially right. at that age. And they, you know, maybe they don't understand exactly what you're saying, but they remember right. that. And it, it's so difficult to break some of those norms. Again, even in these areas where, you know, like I said, very liberal areas, right. very informed parents. And, and it's just so ingrained in our culture that I get an email like that in 2018. Right. Um, so it, that's really been very interesting in raising a child. Another example is my, my son and I, we, we painted our nails. Right, right. And we went to, uh, he went to school and he came home and he said, mommy, this, this girl in my class told me that nail polish is only for girls. Hmm. And, you know, and I said, well, obviously not because you're wearing nail polish and you're a boy. So, right, right. Um, <laughs> but I mean, again, these 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 ideas are so deeply ingrained so early with our right. kids. Okay. And it, it can be really hard to break that. Just as a parent, it's hard to even know where to start with that. 
Sure. Um, and you don't have control necessarily. Right. Like I don't have control over what kids at school tell my son. They can tell him that nail polish isn't right. for boys. Maybe that sticks with him. Maybe it doesn't. Right. And and that's just one very small example. Of course, of course. Um. I, yeah. I also find in preschools it's very interesting with little girls, especially mm-hmm. the way mm-hmm. that little girls and little boys are treated, even in preschool, is very right. different. Right. And. I think one thing that we can all do right now, especially for raising feminist daughters, right. is really put stock and a value in when little girls say no. So when, when little girls say no, there's a tendency to say, oh, are you sure? No, it's okay. Go ahead and do this instead. And, and it comes out, you know, like when you're saying goodbye to someone, oh, give X a kiss goodbye. And if, if a little girl says no, there's this inclination to say, oh, it's okay. It's okay. Just do it. Just do it. And I think the best thing that we can do as parents is to understand that even when our children are small, they have agency and giving them that agency early allows them to build the confidence in themselves that will be so important moving forward. And as they grow up, knowing that they have the ability to make choices for themselves is really going to change the way women approach the world. And we can start that as early as preschool just by respecting what they say. Absolutely. So, Devin, give us a a website where people can get more information from you. Yes, you can find us at hellbentmedia.com, and we are on Twitter at hellbentpod, and you can find me on Twitter at Devin Handy. And we have, a, like I said, a very uh, vibrant community on Facebook. We talk a lot. We share stories. Absolutely. Um, Yeah, so you can (laughs) listen to us there. (laughs) All right. Thanks for being on the show again, and good luck to you. Okay, don't go anywhere. The holidays are right around the corner. Up next, we have great, easy, stress-free party tips you do not want to miss. We'll be right back. 